Hey everyone, in the previous video we went over a demonstration that showed you that you need two things to write and execute Python programs. The first thing is you need an editor, and the second thing that you need is a Python interpreter. And it would be nice if we could have one tool that integrates both of those things together. And in this video I'm going to show you one such tool. Uh, this one is a cloud-based tool, and then in the next video I'm going to show you another tool that we can use that's a local to our own machines. So if you go to pythonanywhere.com and you create a free basic profile, then this is your homepage, this is your dashboard. And what you can do here is go to a new console and go to Python and click either 3.7 or 3.8. You don't want Python 2, so we're just going to stick with Python 3. I'm going to go with 3.8, the newest version of Python. And uh, this loads the entire Python interpreter. You'll see uh, you see it said interpreter up there. It was quick, but it said it. So now this thing, this is what we call the console. This takes Python commands, and then we can uh, quickly see the, the output of such commands. Like if I typed uh, print hello world, right, and then I push enter to execute that, then uh, we see the output is hello world. So that's pretty nice right there. We can we can just start coding in Python almost immediately, right, after we create this account. Now if I go back to the dashboard, what I really want to do is be able to create program files. Right, so the console was nice, but I want to I want to put all my commands in one nice little packaged file. So here you'll see recent files, and I'm gonna to choose to open another file. And uh, I'm gonna create this file, and it has to be in this directory that Python Anywhere gives me. So your username is going to be different than mine, so you'll make sure that your user, your, uh, your, your uh, path is what they provide you, and then you give it a name. So I'm just going to type hello.py. Right. And it's because I've already actually done this for a test, it already exists, so I'm going to choose to edit it, but you might, uh, you, you would click new or um, create or open or whatever. So now this is this is really handy here. This is my editor, and you see that in my uh, in my file uh, I already have this written ahead of time. So yours will be empty here, and so this is where you would give it commands. So uh, here's my command, my very simple command: print hello, you know, hello world, and that's it. That's that's all the instructions I want to give to the the computer right now. So uh, what I can do now is uh, click run. And that will load the console and the Python interpreter down here. So you can see loading console, interpreter, and then here's the output of your program. So the program did what I wanted it to do. It uh, printed hello world. So this is very nice and convenient because we have the editor and the console integrated into one thing, and the interpreter for that matter. They're all integrated into one nice tool. So as I write my program, as my programs get longer with more instructions, um, I can run it intermittently, right, and then look at the output of my program to make sure it's doing what I think it should be doing. So I can go back and forth, right, enter some commands, run it, see what it looks like, what it, what it gives me as the output, then, then come back and edit and keep going until I'm satisfied with my program. And at that point, I would click Save, right? Save my program, and then when I go back to the dashboard uh, and I click Files, then that hello.py will be in that uh, space, and I'll be able to, to download it to my machine, because remember, this is on the internet, this is cloud-based. So all of our files, until we download them on, to our machine, are in the cloud. And that's actually one of the, the negatives with Python Anywhere, is that uh, it's cloud-based, so as soon as you lose an internet connection, all of this is useless. So you have to have a strong internet connection. And another um, drawback to Python Anywhere is that it's actually missing a tool called the Variable Explorer, um, which you're going to learn about soon in the next video. And um, because of these reasons, I'm not going to use Python Anywhere in this class. I'm going to use my own local integrated program. Okay, I'm going to install something on my computer that doesn't require the internet after I install it, and I'm going to use that uh, in our class. And so um, I recommend you do the same, but before you install anything, if you just want to get started with Python very quickly, Python Anywhere is a great choice. So I will see you in the next video where we're going to learn 
how to download Spider, and Spider is where I'm going to be doing all of my demonstrations at. Thank you.